Sprawl. Puerto Rico on a long road to recovery. Thousands still without power or drinking water on the island. Joining me now is Mayor Philip Levine, who is among those Florida leaders working to bring supplies to the hard hit area. Mayor, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Jackie. So you were just there this week. You flew to Puerto Rico to bring some of that much needed aid. Tell us about your experience there. Well, we came in with a, actually a huge aircraft. We filled it with 7,000 pounds of supplies. I mean, literally like everything from medical supplies, diapers, food, water, generators, everything you could think of. Uh, I mean, the plane made it there. We took a separate plane to escort it because we didn't have enough room on the other plane. We got there. That amazing mayor of San Juan, no. uh, Mayor Carmen she, she's Cruz, amazing. she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. She met us there uh, and it's devastated. It's unfortunate. It's sad. Um, she took us all around San Juan and you see everything down, ripped up, power lines, there's a curfew. It's in terrible, sad shape and what's amazing, Jackie, is you know we, we forget that these are American citizens. Mm -hmm. Over three million of them. That's America there, Puerto Rico. Have you been there before? Had you oh, been to San many Juan? times. Oh, of course. I mm -hmm. built my companies in the cruise ship industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, San Juan and Puerto Rico is a, is, a, is a second home to me. Something I heard the mayor say, and she said that the Puerto Rico that we knew before is not the Puerto Rico we know today. And it's going to be a long road to recovery. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. But it all depends on, of course, uh, what happens out of Washington. And I've been saying it over and over again. I said we need to declare war on Hurricane Maria and declare war on devastation. And what does that mean? That means bringing in military assets, really treating this the way we've treated any other war. I mean, you know, what's frustrating to me, Jackie, is you look at what the greatest generation did in D-Day when they landed in Normandy, and, and they did it. And when I hear some of the excuses coming out of Washington, I'm like, what, a, what would General Eisenhower say? What would FDR say? Uh, and when we were landing in Normandy, would they say, well, the weather's not that good, uh, and uh, we're not getting enough cooperation from those communities in northern France? They wouldn't say that. Uh, they wouldn't complain. They wouldn't give excuses. They would just get it done. And unfortunately, that's the message that we're not hearing from Washington that's very frustrating for all of them, including the mayor and a lot of people I meet in mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. You said that we have to treat this as a war, and both senators in the state of Florida, Nelson and Rubio, have said the military must get involved because they're trained to deal with situations like this. You, obviously, you agree with that. And how long would, would it take for the military to get there and just get get into action and get into full gear with this? I, they should have been there five, six, seven days ago, eight mm -hmm. days ago. Uh, we were attacked. Uh, our island was attacked, Puerto Rico, and we should have been there sooner. Now, of course, I'm happy the president suspended the Jones Act, uh, mm -hmm. but I wish he had done it like literally the day before or the day after. I don't know what they were waiting for because the Jones Act restricts shipping. It won't allow ships to go into Puerto Rico that obviously should go in. We should allow everything and anything to make this happen. I can tell you one thing. Uh, in all honesty, the Velvet Navy was there. They were mm -hmm. right on the scene, and that's the cruise ship industry. So right. kudos to Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Norwegian, all of them, what they did by putting their ships there, taking people out, bringing in supplies, because they were just responsible corporate citizens, and we're happy to see that. And they continue to do that. They continue to send their ships there, and it's really, Absolutely. truly unbelievable what they're doing as well. Let's talk about power, because we lived it here to a certain extent as well. Many of us lived without power for days, some of us even for, for a full week. That, of course, is the nerve system of any country, of any community, of course. And Puerto Rico right now, they're saying that it could be upwards of up to six months that they could be without power because uh, the mayor has said that the whole uh, electricity and the whole grid was mm -hmm. devastated. So do you think that they could be helped by us as well in that department? No question about it. But can you imagine, like, think about what needs to be done. The United States military could be dropping in, bringing in generators. They could be bringing in solar generators. They should have had this ready, bringing it in. You can't get to a remote village, have a medical paratrooper drop in, drop supplies in, use drones. You can't get to a certain area, use amphibious vehicles, land them on the shore the way we did in World War II, whatever we need to do. In other words, you don't feel the, the will. You know, in my office in Miami Beach, we have a sign that I put up. It says, the speed of the leader determines the rate of the pack. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this leader ain't running fast, and the pack ain't running fast with it. Now, hopefully, we're going to see some changes, and maybe they're, they're hearing the message from them. But if you don't have electricity, you can't get anything done. It's dark at night. But I, I, I believe that, uh, I'll tell you, that mayor of San Juan, uh, she's spectacular. Very touching. So I just want to get back to what you said about the leader of this country. Obviously, you're referring to President Donald Trump, and you believe that he did not do a good job with the response to Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico? Absolutely not. You know, listen, I've seen in every organization, every company, when you're a great CEO and you're on it and you have great people working for 
for you. You are so on it. You're so making sure everything is getting done. You're not tweeting. You're not reading about this. You're not messing with the NFL. You are focused on your people. And we haven't seen that kind of leadership. The FEMA organization is a fantastic organization. They're great. But if they don't have great leadership above them saying, we'll give you whatever you need, let's get it done, then things don't happen that way. It goes slow. No one wants excuses. I go back to D-Day. You know, when you think about the people of Puerto Rico, uh, for them, this is no holiday. This is their D-Day. And we need to be there the way we were always there. And when America comes together to get things done, we can do it. But it starts at the top. You, of course, are mayor of Miami Beach, but you're also a very successful businessman. And a lot of businesses have been leaving Puerto Rico. Their economy has been in a dire situation for a long time. Do you think that... It, because the situation is so dire there, that's going to take even longer for them to get back on their feet. I, I think so. But one of the things you should do, and I think the government should do, and I would say that Washington should do, is go get data at emergency tourism czar, a czar that will help them work with the cruise industry and hotels, not just for Puerto Rico, but the United States Virgin Islands as well. Come up with economic incentives. Work to get these economies going back. Listen, Puerto Rico had a healthy economy for many years. They did well. They fell into tough times. But I believe that you know, the Puerto Rican spirit, that beautiful island, the tourism, the, the pharmaceutical industry, the possible financial industry coming in, there is great opportunity there. And sometimes, you know, disasters happen and good things, God willing, will come from it. Let me ask you, because you obviously toured San Juan with the mayor, what struck you the most? Well, first of all, to see her empathy, her compassion, her rapport with her people, and the Puerto Rican energy and warmth and spirit. You know, we had lunch in a shelter, and uh, the way they acted, the way they felt, they wanted to make sure you had water, make mm -hmm. sure that you were taken care of while you were there. Uh, you feel it in that warmth of the Puerto Rican people. But, you know, the flooding that they had was horrible, the down poles everywhere. It's, it, it, they need a major American intervention. They need hope. You know, without hope, it's hard to get things done. You want to know that you're a part of something greater. And Puerto Rico is part of the United States of America. Let's treat them that way. What do they need the most right now, you think, in your estimation? I would think energy. They need mm -hmm. electricity. They need mm -hmm. generators. They need to make sure that the structure that's there, they can get things around. They need fuel, diesel fuel. They need medical supplies. Um, they, they literally, they need everything. They need water. Uh, and I think, you know, for example, I would expect the president to go talk to some of the big utility companies in America and say, who do you have available? We're going to airlift you in. You need to get the power back on. Go to Iowa, Idaho, Kansas. I don't care where you go. They have tremendous amount of electricity companies. Fly those people down. Fly resources down. Get their power going. Figure out every way possible. Once again, act like the greatest generation act. They work together and they got things done. Don't want to hear excuses. Superintendent Alberto Carvalho said this week that they're ready for the influx of, of new students that may be coming to this area from Puerto Rico. What about Miami Beach, the city of Miami Beach? Oh, we welcome people with open arms in Miami Beach. We're the most tolerant, uh, diverse city, I, I think, in the whole state of Florida. And uh, we welcome people from Puerto Rico. And I think that you're going to see a lot of Puerto Ricans coming to Florida, maybe not permanently, maybe temporarily, uh, because right now things on that island are horrible. And uh, once again, it's our responsibility as a nation to help these people. Before I let you go, I do want to address uh, Hurricane Irma here in South Florida and Miami Beach. And how did Miami Beach fare after Hurricane Irma? Well, our community came together, Jackie. Uh, you know, we were very, very prepared. We have a fantastic city staff, and we have some very active residents, as you know. And that active residency, that, that constituency came together. Uh, we were prepared. We, we were able to, to, obviously, we were very fortunate. I always said we didn't dodge a bullet. We dodged the cannon. And afterwards, of course, our recovery and cleanup was fast. It was rapid. And it was like a military operation, a lot mm -hmm. of people said. So we're very thankful. But once again, these so-called abnormal weather events may become the new normal. We need to be prepared. And of course, Miami Beach had pumps. We had risen roads. And we're going to continue to do that. Let's talk about the curfew because some people uh, were complaining about it. Some residents of Miami Beach, mm -hmm. they wanted to get back to see their homes and any damage that was done. They just wanted to get back home and they couldn't. Mm -hmm. Do you think that worked for the city of Miami Beach or not? 100% worked. We had a 24 hours. You couldn't come back. We had down trees, down power lines, gas leaks. What would have happened is, and I said to the people of Miami Beach, I said, folks, Thank God we did well preparing. We did well weathering the storm. Let's make sure we don't have people get hurt, God forbid, killed during the recovery. So 24 hours was nothing. My God, it could have been a Cat 5 direct hit. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't even having that conversation. Would you do anything differently? 
Truthfully, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think, thank God, we have a fantastic city manager, Jimmy Morales, an amazing chief of police, Dan Oates, Virgil Fernandez, our chief of fire. Everyone came together, Eric Carpenter. So the team was ready. I, I think, thank God, and the reviews we got from the people were that uh, uh, we did a good job. But then again, you can always do better and we'll always learn. Do you think that the response by the state was, you know, Governor Rick Scott, who has been so many times here to South Florida, sure. to the Keys, do you think w it was adequate? Were you satisfied yes. with that? Yeah, matter of fact, I thought the governor did a good job. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I can't stand, I can't stand when people play politics with mm -hmm. things. The governor did a good job. If anyone expects me to say he didn't do a good job, then they're talking to the wrong mayor. Let's talk about the seawall that uh, they're constructing right now on, on, in a part of Miami Beach. Sure. How important is that for? Very important. So that's Indian Creek Drive, right. and that's mm -hmm. one of the big things we've had. It's a hurricane evacuation route, and it was flooding. Literally, of course, I think President Obama said that he saw that there were fish swimming on that road during King Tide. So we were able to work and get that pushed up higher. We're building seawalls. The road is higher. causes a little traffic, but it's going to be able to serve generations to come, and it will be dry. I know you have a trip once again going to, to Key West. Yes. You're going to be traveling with some of the mayors. Yes. Um, tell us about that a little. Well, with the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and as you know, we hosted it in Miami Beach mm -hmm. a few months back. I'm going to be with Mayor Landry, the mayor of New Orleans, and Mayor Steve Benjamin, the mayor of Columbia, South Carolina, and the president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Uh, uh, and we're all going down to, to, to meet and see the Keys and, and offer any assistance and make sure they're getting what they need down there as well. Are you planning another trip to Puerto Rico? I hope so. Future? Absolutely. I love going back. And so I'm hoping to continue and, and do more. And, uh, and of course, it's all about uh, making sure the government is aware and understanding that they need to move in military time. And finally, tonight, what can we do to help the situation in Puerto Rico? Because we know that they have food, they have water, they have a lot of aid that's standing there or sitting right. there in the port. And it's very right. difficult to disperse it around the island. Right. What can we do to help? Well, I can tell you this. The mayor of San Juan has great distribution. She's able to get things around the city in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I do believe the American Red Cross is a fantastic organization and I recommend that people get involved in the American Red Cross donate to the American Red Cross and say specifically you want your money to go to Puerto Rico that's the best advice Mayor Philip Levine thank you so much for joining us here and for your efforts in Puerto Rico and here in South Florida as well we thank appreciate you it. thank you Jack. and still ahead on Etadeo heading to Tallahassee we sit down with the state senator-elect to speak about her historic victory here in South Florida for better mornings for waking up